after Lu Sheng sent over Ming's information to the butler. He then tells him that with so many people in the military, it would take some time to find the right person. But he promised to inform Lu Sheng as soon as he had any updates. He then asked him if he wanted to offer any assistance once he found the right person. Lu Sheng paused momentarily, but wasn't sure how to respond either. He thought for a moment and said, keep it low-key, but maybe later. He wiped his mouth, hung up the phone, and felt a bit more relaxed, so much so that he let out a yawn, feeling a bit sleepy. He sat down in a chair and quickly fell asleep, once again entering the dream realm. In his dream, Lu Sheng found himself once again on a familiar, dilapidated street. Seeing the zombies slowly surrounding him, he waved them off with a smile, telling them there would be no fighting today and that they'd have to wait until next time. His goal today was to see if he could unlock any new supplement formulas so that once his merit points were settled, he could exchange them for many resources to make more advanced supplements. Meanwhile, at the 9th War Zone Command Headquarters, the Marshal stood up in disbelief. Just moments ago, He Ding Jun had informed him about someone with a combat power of 12 and a half stars. Not only that, He Ding Jun confirmed that the person's strength far exceeded his own. The Marshal laughed heartily finally happy to hear some good news. Murmuring to himself, 19 years old, 12 and a half stars of combat power, and already a top-tier great grandmaster. He couldn't find the words to describe his joy and exhilaration. But one thing was certain after today, there won't be any opposition against Lu Sheng anymore. The young man would undoubtedly be the only one in the military who truly has the potential to become a martial saint. The marshal paced back and forth in the room, thrilled. He instructed He Ding Jun to personally reward General Yu of Division 1182 for discovering such a prodigy for their military, which He Ding Jun nodded. Elsewhere, on a street in the Ninth War Zone, Chin and Snowy walked together. Chin was so thrilled to be back, he looked all around, darting from side to side like an excited child. Snowy glanced at him and silently distanced herself, clearly feeling embarrassed walking beside him. Chin, however, decided to head back to his crib take a shower, clean up, and then invite Lu Sheng out for dinner. He shared his plan with Snowy and asked what she thought. She hesitated for a moment before shaking her head, saying she wouldn't join them today. This made Chin even more suspicious. He told Snowy directly that she had been acting strange ever since Lu Sheng came to the military district. Actually, no. He then corrected himself, saying more accurately since Lu Sheng participated in the martial arts tournament. Since then, every time Lu Sheng was mentioned, Snowy acted weirdly. The two had been friends since they were kids, so much so that they grew up crawling around as babies. Chin patted Snowy on the shoulder and softly asked if she liked Lu Sheng. She clenched her fists and after a few seconds, suddenly turned around, pulling out a dagger and warning Chin that if he kept talking nonsense, she would sew his mouth shut. Chin pretended to be scared, but he already had his answer. Jokingly, he said he'd dated hundreds of girls, and probably had several illegitimate children, so he had seen through Snowy's little secret long ago. In an instant, Snowy released her psychic power, and the blades around her began floating in the air, then shot towards Chin. He quickly dodged, but the blades stopped just before reaching him. So, what if I like him? So what if I don't? Snowy said calmly. Chin breathed a sigh of relief. Finally, Snowy had admitted it. He encouraged her to tell Lu Sheng how she felt. With such potential and charming looks, who else did she have besides Qin himself? Snowy ignored him, but Qin continued, asking if it was because she felt older than him. Or perhaps her martial talent wasn't on par, maybe because her temper was bad, making her feel inferior. Snowy's forehead veins pulsed as she fought to control her urge to lash out. Eventually, she let out a sigh and murmured, that's part of it. Qin looked at her in disbelief. He acted while showing a mix of frustration and helplessness. Shaking his head, he sighed while saying with a smirk, Lu Shang is your student. Do you know what this kind of behavior is called? They have a special category just for this type of thing. Anyway, Snowy couldn't hold back and started beating him up. After taking a few punches, Chin found an opportunity and quickly escaped. He darted through the streets, but when Snowy used her psychic power, he surrendered. Lying on the ground, he quickly said he fully supported them being together, raising both his hands and feet in the air. Laughing, Chin said, Come on, it's the modern era. The age gap between you two isn't that big. In the martial arts world, it's not even news anymore for a grandmaster in his hundreds to marry an 18-year-old. They sat down at a nearby spot, and Chin bought a drink from the vending machine. 
Smiling, he tells her that they are a good match. When Lu Sheng first joined the training camp, he already thought they two looked like a cute couple. Snowy thought Chin was teasing her again, but he was serious this time. He even offered to help her find out Lu Sheng's feelings. Let's be honest, he said. There's no teenager in this world who hasn't had a crush on their hot teacher. Snowy ignored him this time, but her eyes flickered as she looked at the pendant around her neck. She let out a chuckle, but she still shook her head. End of the day, she felt it was impossible for them to be together. Chin stood up, encouraging her not to give up, saying with him around, failure is not an option. The next moment, Snowy, feeling a bit sad, tells Chin that they won't agree to her and Lu Sheng being together. By hearing her mention them, Chin suddenly realized who she meant. She was referring to her two older brothers. One was now in the Central Military District, a top-tier great grandmaster. The other was taken in by a transcendent martial saint at 16 and became his third disciple at age 25. Snowy's two brothers were her half-siblings, but they had always protected her since they were young. Chin had taken many beatings from them when they were kids, which is why he never had any romantic thoughts about Snowy, mostly because of those two intimidating crazy bastards. Chin pondered for a moment. With two overprotective brothers, this situation would be tricky. He jokingly suggested that Snowy have her brothers checked out in hospitals. Snowy chuckled and told him to say that to her brothers himself, mentioning that one of her brothers would be visiting her at the military district in a few days. Chin froze, quickly looking around to make sure his words hadn't been overheard. He thought about it again. Seeing how exceptional Lu Sheng was as a 19-year-old grandmaster, he figured there was nothing for them to object to. Obviously, Chin was not yet aware that Lu Sheng was not only a grandmaster, but also had the combat power of a top-tier great grandmaster. Anyway, we will get back to this. Snowy sighed, explaining that the higher one climbed in martial arts, the more they cared about family background and martial prowess. On one side, there was an ordinary family, and on the other, a lineage of martial arts family. If there's no future, why let it happen? She shook her head with a hint of sadness in her eyes. Chin was at a loss for words. They fell into silence. Suddenly, Chin crushed his drink and stood up, angrily declaring, To hell with family bullshit. If he becomes a martial saint, he will make sure they get married and no one will dare say a word, not even his two damn brothers. Snowy chuckled, telling him he'd have to become a grandmaster first. Still, she appreciated his attempt to comfort her. Walking past him, she thanked him. Snowy slowly walked away, occasionally reaching up to touch the pendant hanging around her neck. It seemed to bring her a sense of comfort. Back at the military district, Chin lit a cigarette, reflecting on his conversation with Snowy. The beautiful storyline of a teacher falling in love with her student, only to be thwarted by family background, seemed cliched and frustrating to him. Suddenly, he noticed a lot of officers running in one direction, looking excited and anxious as if something big had happened. He grabbed one by the arm and asked what was going on. The young officer, upon seeing Chin's rank, immediately saluted and explained that a new 12-star general had just emerged in their ninth war zone, becoming the top of the general star list on his first assessment, and now ranked among the top eight overall across all military districts. They had just received the news and wanted to see him in person. Chin's interest was piqued. Such an outstanding figure appearing in the same military district made him feel proud. A moment later, his face showed disbelief. Lu Sheng? On the screen, the merits have been tallied up, and with three million merits, Lu Sheng had risen from eighth to fourth on the overall list. The young officer excitedly recounted Lu Sheng's feats, saying he had held a double A grade cavern rift by himself within just a month of enlisting, then defended a collapsing defensive line for half a month while eliminating all the beasts. The ground was drenched in blood, and corpses were everywhere, so much so that the military couldn't accurately count the merits. The officer got so excited that his spit was all over Chin's face. Chin pushed him away, but after. Listening to the officer's enthusiastic explanation, Chin suddenly realized that this would definitely satisfy Snowy's brother's strict standards. He quickly pulled out his phone and called Snowy, telling her to get ready for dinner with Lu Sheng later tonight and not to refuse. He teased her, saying she'd never guess what had happened. Meanwhile, at the headquarters of the Ninth War Zone, General Yu stood there, surprised that the commander wanted to see him personally. Quite a significant honor, if you ask him. The last time he had seen the commander was eight years ago, when he became a general. As the door opened, He Dingjun waved him in with a smile. 
They sat facing each other in his office. He started off praising General Yu's achievements, making him sit even more upright, however. He attributed it all to the commander's excellent leadership, unaware of what the commander was really trying to say. He Ding Jun shook his head, saying it had nothing to do with him but actually due to General Yu's own keen insight in recommending such a prodigy, causing him to be stunned. Perhaps already thought this was his reaction. He then handed him a document, saying that he'd understand once he read it. General Yu received it with both hands and opened the first page, which was filled with information about Lu Sheng. The last page recorded recent events. Lu Sheng had defended the front line alone for nine days, killing over 350 level 7 beasts and 7,600 level 6 beasts. What shocked him the most was Lu Sheng's combat power, which was measured at an astounding 12 and a half stars. Sweat soaked General Yu's back. The top-tier Great Grandmaster evaluation made it impossible for him to stay calm. He suddenly stood up, but Ding Jun asked him to remain calm. He understood his feelings, as he had been just as surprised. Smiling, he patted General Yu's shoulder, thanking him for finding such a prodigy for their eastern military district. Furthermore, General Yu would now be responsible for three divisions in addition to his Division 1182. Not only that, he would also be promoted from Major General to Lieutenant General. General Yu could hardly believe it. His promotion didn't excite him as much as the thought of Lu Sheng. He remembered Lu Sheng jokingly saying a few days ago that once he became a martial saint, he would promote him. What he had taken as a joke had now come true. Back at Lu Sheng's mansion in the military district, Lu Sheng stood in front of the sink, examining his teeth in the mirror. According to the immortal star technique, as the number of immortal cells increased, his life form would continue to change. From the moment the first immortal cell was born, he had been advancing toward an extraordinary life form. Now, even this teeth can regenerate and grow back. He just hoped he wouldn't lose his human form. He didn't want to become someone who would sacrifice everything solely for martial arts. After a night's rest, he felt much better. However, for his next breakthrough, he would need a lot of beast marrows. He wasn't sure if his merits had been calculated yet. Just then, the butler entered now addressing him as General Lu. He brought good news. The merits had been totaled, amounting to over 3.8 million. A portion of 7th level beast marrow cost only 100,000 merits, but mithril gold would cost 1,000 merits per gram, which was pricier than he had expected. His 3.8 million merits could only be exchanged for less than 4 kilograms of mithril, not enough to craft a new handle for his spear. The butler explained that mithril gold was very rare and the military didn't have much of it. However, the commander had ordered that even if Lu Sheng's merits were insufficient, he could spend up to an additional 10 million merits offered by the military. Lu Sheng was pleasantly surprised so much so that his face went from this to this. Lu Sheng planned to craft a level 7 spear shaft, using mithril gold as the primary material, and trading the rest for level 7 beast marrow. He asked if there was any info on the 8th level beast marrows. He figured that he could find a mithril gold mine later and extract more himself. The butler reminded him that current technology couldn't remove the negative factors in level 7 beast marrow, and level 8 was even more dangerous. No one in the military could directly absorb it, and its side effects were severe. Lu Sheng reassured him, saying he would be fine while wanting to buy five level 8 beast marrows. However, when he heard that level 8 beast marrow was 10 times more expensive than level 7, he decided to start with just one. The butler nodded, then cautiously asked if he should give Ming some special attention. After a moment's hesitation, Lu Sheng asked if he could make sure that Ming not be placed on the most dangerous front lines. The butler simply said he understood, recalling their high school days. Lu Sheng knew he was selfish. He had people he wanted to protect. If anyone accused him of favoritism, so be it. Suddenly, Lu Sheng received a call. To his surprise, it was snowy. He tried to keep his voice relaxed and casual. Snowy asked if he had time in the evening. She and Chin wanted to invite him out for dinner. They agreed to meet at 8 o'clock. After hanging up, Lu Sheng looked at his phone. His face was still calm but just a little red, but his heart had skipped a beat. Despite him having the combat power of a great grand master and his control over his body, the mere mention of her name had made him react this way. Oh my goodness, seems like our boy is starting a new arc. For the good or for the bad, what y'all think?